Rents are surging in some suburbs. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. I want to talk about this article in Yahoo Finance discussing just rents surging in some suburbs. Up to 250 bucks a week. 20 suburbs where it's impossible to rent by Eliza Bavin. Now let's let's look at a few things. I'm going to bring up here asking prices for rent in different areas. This is Sydney. Once it refreshes, let me just reload this page here. We can see weekly rents. They took a bit of a dip and now they're climbing right back up. So for all houses, 735 bucks a week. For a three better for a family, 735 a week in Sydney. Units are 480 for all, but 494 for a two better. Now you gotta remember there are a lot of one bedroom units. Shit, a hundred five hundred bucks nearly for a one better. Oh boy. And they took a dip. Now let's have a look at Melbourne. And we'll reload this page. Beautiful here. There you go. And look at the apartments, guys. They've all come down. They've fallen down, but houses have also dipped a bit, but they're going up, they're going up. All homes, five hundred bucks, five thirty three. Three bedders, five thirty five. All units, three hundred and seventy eight bucks. Two bedders, four hundred and two. You know, two better for four hundred and two bucks. Yeah, two hundred bucks each. You could, a young professional could afford that. Brisbane, come on, Brizzy. Just wait for it to reload. Hang on, hang on. It's having a bug. Bear with me, guys. Brisbane rents. There we go. Okay, and we can see here. Look at look at Brisbane rents. They've just shot up. Even in the literally, we're, we're renting. A little duplex at the moment, and every six months they want rents going up, rents going up, rents going up. You can see all houses five fifty six, three bedders five hundred nine dollars a week, all units four hundred and one, two bedroom units four hundred one dollars and eighty cents. So it's shooting up. That's a big move here in Brisbane. It's hard, well, it's hard to rent, guys. Now I want to show here Moba in New South Wales. Uh, look at that, guys. All houses nine hundred and forty four dollars a week. Three bedders seven hundred and eighty nine. I'm showing you this because this is showing you the regional areas units. They're hardly any, but they've kind of flattened. They've fallen, but look at houses. Okay, what's happening in the regions, guys? Let's uh, jump back here and have a look at this article because oh, rents are going up in certain areas. It's getting tough, and that's going to well. It's going to mean investment in some of these areas is going to be lucrative. These 20 suburbs have less, have three or less rentals available. Three, not 3%, three or less. I know we were looking at over in Perth, housing over there. And I haven't done a, a live stream on Twitch for a while, guys. I've got to get back to it. But it's actually, you could buy a property over in Perth right now, a house, and you could pretty much positively gear it with the rents that you're getting at the moment. It's been a tough time for renters, with the market tightening as borders reopen, but some suburbs are more in demand than others. New research commissioned by Well Home Loans has identified 20 suburbs where there are only up to three available rental properties. To qualify as a vacant, a property must have been advertised for rent for 21 days or more, and the suburb had to have more than 500 potential rentals, among other things. The result was a small list of Australian suburbs that had legitimate rental markets and where tenants were competing the hardest for available homes. Well, Home Loan CEO Scott Spencer said there were two different stories playing out with investors in a strong position and tenants struggling to find a home. And I was talking to, to a family member and they're about to put the rent up on an investment property that they've got because, well, they've, they can't afford... Well, no, they probably could afford to, but they can't risk being too far off the market price. So they've got a young family that are in there renting this place, paying an insane amount, frankly, what I think, what I'm thinking, but they're going to have to up it and they may not be able to stay there. If you're an investor in a suburb that contains only three vacant rental properties, tenants have to compete hard for your property, which gives you a chance to push up rents. Conversely, if you're a tenant, life is really tough because it's difficult to find accommodation and you know rents are climbing fast. Scroll down here. Spencer said, 
And these areas' investors were the ones with significant market power. To make matters worth, worse, all the suburbs in this report are in areas with very low vacancy rates. So even if tenants were prepared to move one or two suburbs along, they'd still find it hard to secure accommodation. He said there are, he said the top twenty suburbs, in order to uh, how much the average rent has risen in the past twelve months. So Casuara, let's have a look. Pelican Waters here in Queensland, rent increase in the past twelve months, one hundred and seventy bucks. Mullaney, 150. Ballina, 145. Swansea, 140. Rye, 130. Noosa, North Beach, I'm thinking Noosa, in WA, 130 bucks. Highland Park, 125 bucks. In a year, your rent's going up. $120 in Salty Beach. Reedy Creek, Reedy Creek, down in the Gold Coast. Reedy Creek, dodgy old Reedy Creek. 120 bucks a month. $120. You're pretty much living on the highway. Carumban Waters, $120. I mean, that's a, a decent jump, guys. That's a decent jump. Okay, this is per week. So all of this, 100 bucks per week, that's $400, $400 a month. Boy, $100 is the minimum. Spencer said tenants in these suburbs might want to consider buying. Yes especially if rents had increased to a point where they were now more expensive than mortgage repayments. That said, Spencer also noted some of these suburbs had high levels of disadvantage as measured by the ABS, which would make it harder for local rent- renters or residents to get onto the property ladder. Tweed Heads South and Tweed Heads West, for example, are located in an area in the bottom uh, decline. Uh, decile which means the area is more disadvantaged than 90% of the areas within New South Wales, Spencer said. That means it's hard for tenants to afford rising rents and to save a deposit. Yeah, you get stuck in this trap. You get stuck in this trap, guys, where just rents are going up. You can't find somewhere else. What can you do? Conversely, Castorina is located in an area of, of the top de- decile which means the area is less disadvantaged than 90% of the areas within New South Wales. So they would find it easier to cope with a big jump in local rents and to get onto the property ladder. So let's let's have a talk about this one, guys. So this is a tough one. The people who are well off, they're going to be fine. They're going to be able to handle it, guys. You know what? I'm going to bring up I'm going to bring up a chart here that I think we need to look at just showing one sec, just showing the differences in household income. So this is the real mean week, uh, mean income by group. You can see here at the top, highest income, we're over two grand. The middle, you're about just under 1900 bucks. And this is household, by the way. And you're just the lowest income is here. Now, remember, this is disposable income. If you're on a disposable income under 400 bucks, that's all that's left, you're going to struggle with a $120 a week rent increase. That could take a big chunk out of your disposable income. If you're right up here, eh, you'll be able to deal with it. It's going to be annoying. You'll be pissed off that you've got to pay more rent, and you may seriously start looking at buying something, but you're going to be able to deal with it. Here in the middle, it could go either way, depending on where you live. I mean, taking a... What are we looking at here? What's the highest? You know, 200 bucks a week extra in your rent. That's a decent chunk of your disposable income. We're here, it's, pardon me, here it's 10%. Here it's what, nearly 25%. Here it's 50%. This is Australia. This is the issue that we're facing, guys. And this is why people are just all over the place. Top left. Wrong thing. <laughs> So we've got to look at what's going on here, guys. Do people get into more property? Do they buy in? The government incentivizes people to jump in, but you've got pumping up of the property market. I've done a poll on my community tab asking people where they think property is going. Boom, bust, steady, and it's a mixed bag, really. It's reasonably even. 
it's tough, guys. I mean, what you're going to have to do is you, you know, the only solution if you're tr- if you're stuck in this mess, you need to get rid of your debt. You need to find cheaper accommodation any way you can. You need to get additional income streams coming in. You need to sell every piece of junk that you have that you can liquidate to get out of your debt mess. And you need to try and, well, it only makes sense to jump in, doesn't it? If it's like this, if your rent is more expensive than buying a house, buy a house. But I'll go to negative equity. Yeah, you probably will if it, if it, you know, if it corrects down 20%. But does it matter in five, if you're there for another five years' time and it climbs back up? And you can do what you want. You've got the stability. The negative is you're stuck in one location. You don't have the flexibility. But how many people are already stuck in this location here? And just think, guys, the video I'm going to point you to now, this is the Premier of New South Wales calling for hundreds of thousands or millions of additional migrants to come to Australia to address our job skills gap. What do you think that's going to do to rental demand? Maybe some of these areas and councils need to get out of the way of development so more projects can get off the ground. They need to make it easier for people to build. They need to make it easier for people to split their blocks. They need to make it easier for smaller developments to get ahead so you're not just all dependent on the big boys. They need to make it so inner-city Greens politicians aren't trying to quash lower-cost housing in other cities that has got nothing to do with them. Now, I'm referring here to in Queensland what's happening with projects out of Ipswich. So, guys, what do you reckon? Check out this video where the Premier of New South Wales is calling for additional migration, guys. Like, we need it. I mean, we need, if, sure, bring it in, but make it easier for people to build, make it easier for people to build housing. Take care.